Hi guys, Alberto here. Um, glad to see you again. Today I wanted to show, share with you the special um, lens that I love. It is a vintage Konica 57 f1.2 Konica Exanon, which I use with this adapter from um, um, KNF concept. Um, this is a very special lens to me, and paired with my XC2 or my X Pro 2, um, it really gives, gives me a very special image. It's, um, it's as if uh, I was shooting with film, and it gives me that uh, edge with, uh, with the coating, with the color, rendering, and the final results, as, as you can see right now, in the images I prepare for you. Um, I did a little trip uh, last week, and uh, I brought it with me along my my all-time favorite, which is 18 to 55. I mean, this lens is just great. I really like it a lot. For all kinds of purposes, and uh, I'm gonna share with you about the large prints, as that one and some other ones that I've done for myself and for some customers. And um, yeah, anyhow, uh, today we'll we'll be talking about this uh, this beast of a lens. Uh, I don't know the price range right now on the market, but. Uh, it's really a very special lens. It's heavy. It's not a light lens. 57, which is basically the same as the 57 uh, from Fujifilm, right here. It's heavier, way heavier. And um, this one is a Konica 135, which we'll talk about some other time. But as for today, the images you, you're going to be looking at, are shot like this um, XE2 and this Konica Beast. I really like it a lot. It's been with me for more than 20 years. And I uh, hope you can see in the images uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. I do have my setups, which I'm going to show you with you right now. And um, basically, I use um, three or four setups, which are right here. That you can customize to your liking and um, yeah focusing is pretty easy I uh, use a red high and it's very very it's a very sharp lens and the quality of the images are just amazing bokeh I mean talking about bokeh uh, it's just um, very buttery soft it doesn't have um, noise at all. It's amazing, honestly. Uh, out of the lenses I've had from Nikon, and basically, which is what I was doing, um, using for a long time, um, this lens is just amazing. That's why I've uh, kept it for so long, so that's the other one. And um, as you can tell in these images, uh, it's very worth it. And it does give me a very special look uh, as for color. And uh, in black and white, you can see it's just, you know, it's different. This one's great, the 57 1.2, which are pretty much the same. As for uh, speed and aperture, it, it's great. I do use it when I don't have time to, to risk. Um, but anyhow, depending on my customer, depending on what I'm doing. But in this case, I did this uh, shots for you to share with you, and uh, I do hope you like them. And um, I love this lens. And, and if you're looking for a vintage prime, I don't know. I mean, I've seen reviews or people people talking about this lens, saying that it's. Uh, it's one of the best lenses ever created, so it is a very special lens. Um, 
It does have a little bit of chromatic aberration when shooting at 1.2 in very uh, contrast, like, you know, very contrasty situations like harsh sun and all that, which anyhow, I just don't shoot like that. Uh, I tend to shoot early in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, never under the harsh sun, so I've never had a problem with it. I do tend to see it sometimes, but um, it, it's, it adds to the image. It's not something that's ugly or, or um, doesn't, you know, it's not appealing. But uh, and for portraits, this lens is great. I've used it, uh, as you're seeing in the images, for landscape, uh, portraits, products whatever um it is equivalent to an 85 you know the aspect ratio from this sensor compared to full frame would be you know, it's 1.5 so yeah it'll be around 85 or so so that's you know people kind of uh, get things into one frame like portrait lenses and whatever. I mean, depends on whatever you want to shoot, depending on your style. Uh, but I, I use this one for, for whatever I want. <laughs> Close-ups, portraits, um, landscapes, products, whatever. It's really a good lens. It, it, look at the images and uh, the results are amazing. They're different, they're just different than this one. I'm not saying this is not, this is a great lens. Um, but, um, I don't know, the colors and it's just different and it's very sharp. Um, as for the focusing ring, I don't see, uh, there's no issues, not that I don't see them. There's no issues, it's, it's not um, soft, like to move it, it's not hard. But whatever you place it, it stays there. And um, yeah, most of the time I use it at 1.2 or 2. And um, yeah, for uh, landscapes, mostly I use it at 8. But it really is a beautiful lens. It's heavy. It's heavy, so uh, it's not like you're going to carry it like that as if you're carrying it. With the camera with this, which is light, or the 27, or any other uh, 23, let's say, from Fujifilm, you feel um, no weight on your hand. Whereas with this one, it's it's heavy, but uh, it's worth it. It's a beautiful lens, and um, how do you like the results? I'm going to share with you right now the setups or recipes, as people uh, are calling them right now. As uh, for what I do uh, for highlights, shadows, and um, yeah, um, you know, one of the main reasons why you want to get a Fujifilm is because of the simulation modes. So um, all of the images you're, you're uh, seeing are JPEGs out of the camera with my uh, in-camera um, recipes or setups. Uh, that I'm sure you right now and um, yeah I've been shooting with this XC2 for eight years so far so I see the X-Pro2 and uh, had any I haven't got any issues with it with any of them so yeah uh, I have some some videos that you you can uh, find down there in my playlist and um, talking about the XC2 when I bought it and then four years after I got it and eight years or so after after or been using using it and um, yeah today is about the lens and the quality and the image results with this combo and the um, image, um, the simulation modes that I use in how do I set them up and why. Because um, even though 
the JPEGs right out of the custom right out of the camera are great. I sometimes try to, you know, um, tweak them a little bit. So I've saved my, my setups, about three, four setups that I'm going to show you right now. And uh, um, each photo, as you're looking at, has a uh, the information. Um, but if you're looking for, for a prime manual lens, this is amazing. Uh, honestly, this lens is very, 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 very good. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know and I'll go over them. And if you have any suggestions for me to post, uh, please let me let me know and uh, I'll try my best to do it. So I'll be shooting. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Looks beautiful. See ya. Okay, guys. Um, so about my recipes, my setups or uh, presets, however you want to call them. Uh, you want to go here, menu. Go to it's I think it's number three, and then we go and say select custom settings or edit save custom settings uh, let's go to this one so we go here and say custom one this is what I do this is what I have ISO 1600 dynamic range auto film simulation that's a classic chrome I love it and uh, that's that's how I get it now as for the color, I diminish one because I like that kind of washed out um, film color. So that's how I get it. Then I go to sharpness, it, nothing in this case. Um, highlight tone, that's minus one. So I can um, get soft whites without being, without them being too bright. Then I go for um, shadow tone plus one so I can get more details in the shadows. Noise reduction, that's plus one because um, we're using 1006. So I, I want to get this um, soft image. I don't like very crisp um, images unless intended. Then I just quickly go ahead and and set it back to zero. <coughs> Sorry. Then uh, let's go back. Custom two. It's the same again. We go under uh, ISO 800, dynamic range auto, film simulation. Um, yeah, usually. I should have this one in standard. I don't know what happened, but uh, it should be Provia standard. Provia <clears throat> was uh, I used to to use a lot Provia for um, all sorts of things in different ISOs like fifties, yeah, fifty for uh, product shots, a hundred for product shots. Uh, 400, 800 for uh, portraits, fashion or sports. And now uh, that's that's why I have it like that. So there we have it. The white balance is out of again. Color minus one to get that um, washed out um, film that uh, film feel. <laughs> that you're looking at right now. Um, sharpness, again, minus one. Highlight tone in this case, I pushed it uh, plus one to get more contrast between shadows and, um, and highlights. Noise reduction, uh, again, plus one. 
and that's how I have it. Then I'm going to click this play back and then um, save that custom setup recipe, whatever. Number three, I'll go with uh, standard higher ISO 3200. Then four, um, I get this. which is uh, ISO 800, Dynamic Range Auto, Film Simulation, Astia Soft, mainly for portraits. I like a lot Astia, and so I have it like that. Um, Astia, White Balance Auto, Color Zero, because it's soft, I don't need to, to um, reduce the color anymore. Sharpness, minus one, so I can get that um, silky look on the skin. Then I have highlight tone, plus one, again, and um, shadow tone, plus one. Noise reduction, plus one. So by doing so, I, I get this um, soft look. Um, I kind of washed out image and I think it's very pleasant for portraits here. Then um, we go on this one which I use a lot which is negative. It's an ISO 1600. I never use 100 or 200 for portraits because um, People don't like to, to, to see, you know, all details in skin, every pore of the skin and all that. So most of my customers are um, female and, you know, they don't really like other um, edited images in Photoshop. So uh, by using 1,600 plus, um, um, well, this um, negative, which is uh, similar as a negative standard. Not, mm, I don't use negative high for portraits because it's very contrasty, so it's not, I don't really like it. I rather this one. Um, then, um, as I was saying, 1600 color minus one, sharpness minus one, shadow tone plus one, Noise reduction plus one, I get a buttery look on portraits, uh, which I find very pleasant. And it helps me using an aperture of 1.2 or 2, uh, the most 2.8. I find that it saves me hours of editing and, um, you know, just. Uh, I tend to do just a tiny bit of uh, touch up here and there, uh, but that's it. So that's why I set it up like that. Then um, I have black and white with yellow filter, um, which is basically um, an ISO 1600, black and white with the yellow. So I can uh, enhance the, the contrast and darken the, the skies a little bit. Then I get sharpness minus one, again, to, to have it soft, soft focus. I don't, as I said before, unless it's necessary, I, I don't really like extra sharp images. Um, uh, then highlight tone, I get plus one, shadow plus one, noise reduction plus one, just in case. And um, yeah, this is how I set up my black and white for, for a, um, portraits. Then, um, or, or a landscape as well. Or whatever black and white photography where I want a yellow filter, which is different as the green one. The green one, let's go here. The green one will um, will be good for portraits um, without that contrast as on the other filter, the yellow or even the red one. For very contrasty, uh, we use uh, either yellow or red. 
but I think red being more like, um, I use it more like for landscape uh, or um, architecture where I want a very strong um, contrast. And that's how I do pretty much all of my, my um, shootings with this setups. There's a space for seven. I mean, I could, usually I only use three or four at the most. And you can as well just uh, change them, change them a little bit. Um, so when you turn on your camera, you, you click a quick, that's the base. You can move everything right here at will, or just go to custom one, custom two, and so on and so forth. So those are my recipes for the XC2. Uh, we'll go over the, the recipes on the X Pro 2 in another video. They're basically the same. Uh, it's a slight difference because uh, there's more simulation monster. But, uh, but again, um, I kind of use it at the most for, well, yeah, most of the time I use four. So, yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. You can play around with this and shoot and find your your uh, your liking. You know, you can replicate this or uh, move it a little bit, tweak it a little bit and shoot and go back and forth. And that's pretty simple until you find the ones that you like the most. Okay, see ya.